The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. That comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to pre proclaim release to the captives and to recover sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, my friends, I wonder what Jesus was feeling as he read the scriptures that day in the synagogue. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord. This reading isn't simply about Jesus just getting up to read the assigned passage for the day. This isn't like one of us looking at the schedule and saying, oh, it's my turn to read. I'm going to read the Old Testament lesson. According to Luke, Jesus found the place where these particular verses were on the scroll. He intentionally chose them. Jesus is up to something. He's up to th something. Or maybe we should say something is up in him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him. It's the same spirit that descended upon him at his baptism, the same spirit that filled and led him in the wilderness, the same spirit with which he returned to Galilee. Something is stirring within Jesus. Now in Luke's account of the gospel, what Jesus reads and says today are his first recorded public words. And he speaks them in the town in which he grew up, in the synagogue where he worshiped as a child, among the people who know him and who know his family. It's almost as if he is saying, I'm back and let me tell you who I am and what I am about. Jesus is naming his own purpose in life, how he is to fulfill the will of God the Father. Jesus is naming what God is concerned about in this, our world. <clears throat> 
Jesus is naming a truth. He's describing the work and the direction of his life. He's taking a stand. And it's a very public stand. Jesus is essentially giving his inauguration address. An address that tells us who he is. An address that gives us direction also for our lives. The good news that Jesus is declaring for us is that we are free today to live and to love because he came to proclaim the words of God. Jesus is saying that we are free to embrace the richness of life because of who he is for us. He's setting us free from all that binds us. And so in the midst of everything happening in our lives, Jesus is telling us that he is releasing us from the captivity of our sins. Any of those things which he mentions that he's releasing people from. And so we need not worry because he sets us free from all that binds us. Yesterday, in the midst of where we are today, and into the future. We are saved because of Jesus, and not because of anything that we do or don't do. And so, even in his inauguration, and especially in his inauguration address, we are set free. Free from all that blinds us to the beauty that surrounds us. Free from our fear of the future. Free from the captivity of the systems which entrap us and hold us prisoners. We are free to forge new pathways. Free to be reflections of the one who made us. We are free to imagine justice free to dare to create peace. Today, our good news is that we are home. We are free. And so it's in this freedom that we have in the gospel proclaimed to us by Jesus that there is a question waiting for us. What will our response be? Jesus invites us to put our trust in him. Jesus invites us to follow his path. Jesus invites us to his way of living, a way of living that proclaims freedom, to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to captives, when we are captive, we are set free to proclaim that freedom to others, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the Lord in our lives. Jan Richardson is a United Methodist minister. She's an artist, a writer, a poet, and retreat leader. She has written many poems and many books. And she has a poem that she has written called A Prophet's Blessing. And it is a reflection on what Jesus read in the synagogue in today's gospel. It, the poem speaks about Jesus being with us through everything in our lives. And this poem speaks to Jesus being anointed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor favor in our lives, and thus that favor can be shared with others. And so I share this poem with you now. It's entitled, A Prophet's Blessing, Jesus' Blessing. This blessing finds its way behind the bars. 
This blessing works its way beneath the chains. This blessing knows its way through a broken heart. This blessing makes a way where there is no way. Where there is no light, the blessing. Where there is no hope, this blessing. Where there is no peace, this blessing. Where there is nothing left, this blessing. In the presence of hate, in the absence of love, in the torment of pain, in the grip of fear, to the one in need, to the one in the cell, to the one in the dark, to the one in despair. Let this blessing come. Let this blessing come as bread. Let this blessing come as release. Let this blessing come as sight. Let this blessing come as freedom. Let this blessing come. And so here we are, beginning the year 2022, still in the midst of a pandemic, still trying to live each day. This blessing comes to us of Jesus proclaiming in the temple what his mission is. And this blessing comes to us to help us give direction in our lives. This blessing, these words spoken by Jesus in the temple so many years ago, still hold meaning to us today. This blessing, these words that Jesus proclaimed, give direction in our lives. And so as we are made free by Jesus, may we also live out these words for others. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so we are called to be about in sharing the mission of Jesus to reconcile all the world to God. Thank you, Jesus, for freeing us. And may our lives then be a light to others. Amen.